Have you ever wondered why you find some jokes hilarious while they don't move a single facial muscle to someone else and worse might even offend them and whenever this happens we end up attributing it to the difference in our sense of humor but what is this sense of humor and why is it so drastically different for different people 1 plus 1 is 2 for the entire world unless you believe in numerology and at that point numbers start having mystical meanings and 1 and 1 can become 11 instead <laughs> i don't know welcome to books and brew and i'm your host mayur ghatge in this episode i will talk about a book called mathematics and humor by john allen paulos this book tries to highlight the role math plays in construction of a joke that brings laughter in your life i will talk about three ideas that i liked from the book and that will hopefully make you want to read it But before diving into the three ideas from the book, let's first look into another reason because of which you might end up calculating 1 plus 1 wrong. And that is some good amount of beer. Yeah, that would definitely do it. There are a bunch of different types of beer out there, but today I'll specifically talk about India Pale Ale or IPA as it popularly known as. So back during the colonial era the british were ruling majority of the world and their soldiers were spread across there was a huge demand for beer but some of the colonies like india were too warm to brew beer so some brewer sitting in london he decided to make his beer with extra alcohol content and added hops to it to balance the sweet alcohol flavor hops are basically types of flowers from a species of a hop plant called humulus lupulus but it is properly known as hops adding both these ingredients acted as preservative and the idea was that the beer should stay good during the long voyage to india and thus the name india pale ale for that beer and it turned out that people liked it not just in india but also in britain and elsewhere but today you might wonder that with modern supply chain adding of hops as preservatives is unnecessary and it might go out of fashion as it also makes the beer a bit bitter but brewers around the world have really upped their game by tuning different knobs for brewing IPA some of them include different types of hops like fresh wet dry time of adding hops to the brewing process like before fermentation or at the very end of the fermentation process so that it becomes less bitter and more aromatic also using different yeast to give different flavors to the beer with so many knobs you can just imagine the permutation and combination to get different types of beer one of the very popularly known ipa right now is new england ipa this has extremely low bitterness it's mostly very citrusy juicy flavor and has a hazy texture to it apart from new england ipa then there is an imperial ipa which has higher hops and higher alcohol content then we have this belgian ipa which has a spicy flavor to it which is somewhat similar to cloves then there is a milkshake ipa or lactose ipa and it is because it has a higher lactose content and which makes it even more sweeter so what really qualifies as an ipa is a pretty broad definition but hoppy alone isn't enough to describe it it should follow with descriptions of its bitterness flavor or aroma and texture the color of an ipa can also vary from like light golden to reddish amber so what a black canvas adds to an artist or a painter IPA is to the brewers around the world. So next time when you order your IPA, ask for its details. Know what you are drinking and get amazed at the intricacies of beer brewing. So how math plays a role in making a good beer? It also plays a role in creation of a joke. Surprised? That's the goal of a book today. It's a book called Mathematics and Humor and its author John Allen Paulos is an American professor of mathematics and he writes books with a central theme of mathematics but targeted to readers who are not mathematicians by profession some of the titles of his other books are uh, for example one is called innumeracy uh, it basically means mathematical illiteracy and the book talks about the consequences of mathematical illiteracy on our daily life one of his other books is called irreligion and this book tries to mathematically explain 
how arguments for the existence of God doesn't really add up. And he has more books like these. But today's book of interest, Mathematics and Humor, tries to interpret humor or the construction of a joke from the point of view of mathematics. It's not a book filled with formulas or equations, so don't worry about getting lost or zoned out. Rather, it's a very short graphical book that does a very good job at explaining typical types of jokes and with the mathematical theories behind it. It's rated at about 3.4 on Goodreads, but I really feel the rating is a bit skewed on the lower side because the topic mathematics and humor together probably appeals to a very small audience. The first aspect of the book that I would like to look into is knowing the journey of understanding humor over the centuries. So humor and jokes were widely studied by philosophers and psychologists over the centuries. Aristotle wrote that comedy is a representation of inferior people. It consists of some ugliness or blunders that do not cause pain or disaster but are still ugly. Plato too had somewhat similar idea about humor. The famous Sigmund Freud in his theory maintains that jokes or witticism enable a person to vent his aggressiveness or sexual feelings and anxieties in a disguised, subdued or even a playful manner. He did acknowledge the existence of harmless wit, but overall the comedy wasn't seen in a very respectable manner until very deep into 19th century. And I think majority of us today in 2020 would not really agree with these theories given by the philosophers and psychologists back then. So Paulus in his book supports the theory that came later from Arthur Kosler, which says, and I quote, Laughter arises when two or more inconsistent, unsuitable, inappropriate or incongruous things or circumstances are placed together and if you notice them in a mutual relation in a particular manner, humor resolves and it makes you laugh. Stop quote. So Arthur Kosler was an Hungarian author and in 1964, he gave an amazing comparison between science, poetry and humor. He states that all three of these are in a way making comparison between different incongruous things, but the only difference between them is the emotions and the intentions behind these comparisons. For example, humor compares incongruous things with a touch of aggressiveness and the intention is to find laughter in the comparison. Science on the other side does the comparison with more reasoning and analogies behind it and the intention is to learn from these comparisons. While poems have comparison that are more admiring in nature with the intentions of being in positive emotional connect. So you see how these three different domains which prima facie do not have anything in common have some basic construct behind them with a difference in the emotional connect. Through the various psychological and philosophical theories evolved, Paulus concludes that two ingredients that are necessary and sufficient for the condition of humor are first a perceived incongruity and second, an appropriate emotional climate. So Paulus uses this incongruity theory to build the mathematical model for jokes. So the second idea from the book that I'd like to talk is the idea of set theory. It's a mathematical theory of collectibles called sets and its members are called objects. A particular object can be a member of a specific set or can also be a member of multiple sets. One of the very famous category of jokes that are considered quote unquote intelligent are puns. And one of the very famous mathematical pun we can't help but come across is on 14th of March. So 14th of March is celebrated as Pi Day. So P-I-E Pi as we all know is a deliciously tasting food item. While P-I Pi is one of the most commonly used mathematical constant with its value being 3.1415 and so on. So if you see here closely, pi belongs to a set of food items and it also belongs to a set of mathematical constants. The food industry made use of 14th of March or the date 3.14 to make a pun and an event out of it which we are victims of. To give you another example of a pun, uh, it goes something like this. Let's say I ask you a question. What is Isaac Newton's favorite dessert? And the answer is apple pie. 
and why is that so there are three different sets one is a set that belongs to the pie food and the second belongs to the story that isaac newton discovered gravity when an apple fell on him so the second set is related to isaac newton and apple or gravity and the third set is basically the fact that isaac newton in 1665 computed the first 15 digits of the constant pi with hand using calculus. If you observe closely, the three sets are connected using Isaac Newton and pi and that's how a pun is generated. And that gets the pun more interesting. So more the intersection of different sets, more funnier the pun is. And that's the fun of the pun. You see what I did there? So pun forces one to perceive in quick succession two incongruous or unrelated sets of ideas. So when you hear the word pie, you are confused between, okay, are we talking about the food or are we talking about the mathematical construct? And the suddenness between the interpretation of one meaning of pie to the other brings in humor and that's what the puns are. The second use case of set theory for humor can be broadly clubbed or basically put in a set of meta jokes or self-reference jokes. We have seen Deadpool and in that Ryan Reynolds comes out of his character every now and then and makes us realize that we are watching an act of fiction and the actors within it also know that it's an act of fiction. If you think again, those self-reference jokes are one of the most funniest in the movies. So this idea of self-reference is seen in a popular mathematical paradox in the field of set theory called Russell paradox. The paradox arises if you are considering a set of all sets that are not members of themselves. Such a set appears to be a member of itself if and only if it is not a member of itself. And that is why the paradox comes. I know, I know, it's a bit difficult to understand the Russell paradox in a podcast. But trust me, if you read the book, it's very straightforward and much simpler than what it sounds like. To give you an example of a Russell joke or a joke depending on Russell paradox, uh, it goes something like this. Let's say a person says, quote, I am a liar, stop quote. Now, if you believe he is saying the truth, then he really is a liar. And thus, he should be lying right now, which is opposite to what you assumed. On the contrary, if you decide to believe that he really is a liar, then the statement he made itself is true which doesn't make him a liar it's again contradictory to your assumption so you see how a russell paradox works behind the construction of these types of jokes you will see many russell jokes in our daily life in some form or the other just try to look for the patterns we all have experienced this at some point we tell an amazing joke and there is someone in the room who doesn't get it and at the end you end up explaining the joke or the pun, and it's no more funny. The idea of abruptness or the sudden switch in the emotions adds to the humor. So why do you think this happens? No points for guessing. Yes, there is a mathematical theory and that brings to the third and the last idea of this episode. It's a theory called catastrophe theory. A French mathematician, René Thon, came up with this in 1975. It's majorly been studied for mathematical applications, but Paulus in his book uses this theory to study humor. This catastrophe theory model has various different variations and each of these sub-variations can be defined by a mathematical equation. It can also be understood graphically and that's what Paulus has done amazingly in this book. So, any typical joke can be divided into two parts. The first being the premise where you set the background story, add ambiguities for the listeners to interpret the story in multiple ways. And then the second part is the punchline, which adds sufficient information to the premise to suddenly clear the ambiguities. And this abrupt interpretation switch in your mind releases emotional outburst in the way of laughter. This outburst due to the sudden interpretation switch after the punchline is said is what Paulus calls a catastrophic drop that is bought and then he models it using the catastrophic theory model. 
the larger the gap between the perceived story that you interpret after the first part of the joke to the actual story that you get after the punchline greater is the laughter and smaller this gap poorer the joke is paulus also uses a complicated catastrophe theory model called the swallow tail catastrophe model to model more complicated jokes that have multiple different domains and have multiple punchlines i really recommend listeners to read this part of the book to get an idea what exactly happens when you listen a punchline and if you observe it is highly likely that if a punchline involves some sexual or a political reference the anxiety that is brewing in the minds of the listener brings a huge catastrophic drop from the perceived story to the punchline and leads to a great laughter and maybe that is why we see a lot more political comedy or comedy which has some sexual connotation to it so paulus in this book defines the formula for humor as a perceived incongruity in an appropriate emotional climate he summarizes it very well he says and i quote logic pattern rules and structure all these are essential in both mathematics and humor although the emphasis is different in the two in humor the logic is often inverted the patterns are distorted rules are misunderstood and structures are confused intentionally yet these transformations are not random and must still make sense to some level understanding the correct logic pattern rule or structure is essential to understanding the joke stop quote so who do i recommend this book to i recommend this book to three different sets of people the first set of people are the ones who are amazed by the capability of math in their daily professional life and this book will give you the funnier side of mathematical applications second is a set of people who used to like math as a kid but over time have grown averse to the idea of it and don't use it in their daily life to them this book will give a reason to fall in love with the beauty of math again which is not just numbers and the third set of the people are the ones okay wait i guess the third set is a null set so basically i recommend this book to everyone it's a short 125 page book and an interesting read if you like humor or math or both please do let me know how we found this episode for more episodes of books and brew tune into my youtube channel or wherever you get your podcast from be it apple podcast google podcast spotify or any other music for this show is done by rahul thomre and editing is done by chaitanya deore spread the word keep reading and happy listening